Hello, and welcome to Scott's Odyssey. Here's a question. When is a locomotive turntable not a locomotive turntable? Here's the answer. When it's a bridge. See you in a minute. Welcome back. If you've watched my videos before, thank you for your patronage. And if you're new to Scott's Odyssey, welcome aboard. Just up the road from Holidaysburg in Frankstown Township, the same name used for the Frankstown Path, lies an even smaller village named Geezytown. It's here you will find a swath through the tree lines that dictate an old extension of the PRR for the Williamsburg branch of the line. Although many people refer to it as the Petersburg branch, it never went to Petersburg nor Alexandria. The Williamsburg branch junctioned from the Springfield branch and ran from Williamsburg with stops at Franklin Forge, Springfield Junction, Flowing Spring, Reese, White Bridge, Frankstown, and the Williamsburg Junction in Holidaysburg. Why all this talk about train stops on a branch line? Well, one of those stops on the Williamsburg branch is White Bridge. White Bridge was a small span covered bridge over the Juniata River that was painted white and as far as anyone knows, was as old as the area itself, at least old enough to have been around long before the Civil War. And in all the infinite naming conventions people can come up with, this part of Pennsylvania, like so many other parts of Pennsylvania, just called something a name by what they saw. What's that? How is that different than other locations? I don't think you understand. Pennsylvania has road names like 40 foot road, which usually denoted a road of 40 feet crossing a farmer's property. But today there are about 6,000 40 foot road names designated in this state with none of them interconnecting. You think that's weird? Try searching for stump road and see what kind of returns you get. For that matter, in the lone grave of the Alleghenies video, if you were to visit, one of the main roads just off the highway is called Foot of Ten Road, which is the road that is at the foot of Ten, the inclined plane. Well, just like those names, the train that went through Geezy Town stopped a short distance at a station actually located within Geezy Town or Frankstown Township, but the name it was given was White Bridge because of the white painted covered bridge that you saw from the station. Now, at some specific time during this bridge's life, it suffered significant wear and tear due to use as well as flooding of the Juniata River and was marked as mostly unusable. This does not mean it was not used, but during this time there were a lot of improvements taking place and a lot of land was changing hands. In this particular area a lot of the land was diverted to the PRR for quarry use so that things could be expanded elsewhere along the lines and the roads around the White Bridge were hardly used by the locals. In all due time, that began to change, but the roads were in extreme disrepair and not very wide, which led to a community that was extremely unhappy. In a judge's ruling, the roads needed to be expanded and repaired, and PRR was responsible for 50% of the assistance toward the infrastructure update. With a donation of about $8,000, the PRR did its part in road assistance. That brings us back to the White Bridge. Multiple covered bridges were being replaced with newer, stronger, wider bridges made with steel girders. The White Bridge had found itself as one of the last three standing covered bridges to be replaced, the other two being the one at Flowing Spring and one over in Antis. And then it happened. In the spring of 1929, at a township bid held to help financing, the White Bridge sold for $5 to a local named H.E. Replogli. Let me know in the comments below if you know of stories and locations such as this one, or if you know what H.E. Replogli did with the old white bridge. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe and jump out to the Patreon. Help support this channel. So the intent was to use a secondhand bridge to put in White Bridge's place, especially because traffic in these parts was mostly local and just a little bit left for the quarries down the road. The downside was 
there was no money left to replace the bridge, and the $5 really did not help very much. So this area was put back on the list of just going into abandonment with an argument that modern day automobiles can just as easily detour a little down the road to Frankstown and come back up on the East Loop Road. Over a few months, the reception to abandonment of the White Bridge Road was met poorly. And ultimately the legal finding was that, and I quote, a township road shall have no blind ends, but must be a connecting link. So now the township was back on the hook for connecting the White Bridge Road to the Juniata Valley Road on the other side of the river. At the same time the bridge had sold, the Lewistown PRR was updating their roundhouse and their turntables for locomotives because they were rolling in their new M1 heavy mixed traffic locomotives of the 482 mountain arrangement. The old turntable was only 75 feet long and was built all the way back in 1902. In order to handle the M1 locomotives, the turntable needed to be much longer. So the replacement ended up being 110 feet long. I know, right? What does a train turntable have to do with a covered bridge? Well, here's where it gets interestingly odd. The township had no money to buy a new bridge. Nobody was willing to give them a steel bridge for free and it's not recorded exactly why or how it happened, but Frankstown Township, although some claim it was financed by Blair County, was able to acquire the secondhand turntable from Lewistown. And what they did next is really, well, interesting. They rebuilt the abutments on either bank, and then they built a concrete pier that had to extend a bit into the river. The 75-foot turntable was a bit shorter than what was needed. They then took the second-hand turntable, flipped it upside down, and laid it across the river. That's right. As described in newspaper articles, the locomotive turntable was placed reverse side up, with the girders that supported the tracks acting as the side of the bridge. Want more proof? Well, here you can actually see the original plaque that marked the build and date information for the original turntable, where you also find out that this locomotive turntable was built by American Bridge Company for the use of a railroad roundhouse, but ended up as a, well, bridge. And the sign is still upside down.
This site was slated back in the late 90s for a replacement to take place sometime around 2018. But fortunately for us, I was able to capture some final images and get its story in our annals before it's no longer there. If you haven't already, remember to click like on this video and to subscribe for more odd to see stories of who we once were. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.